these Lent groups for 2021 begin with the words of the last Sunday Gospel, that's the first Sunday in Lent, and link them to a painting and a piece of music to contemplate as we prepare for Holy Week and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Words from last Sunday's Gospel, Mark 1. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. The artwork which I'm contemplating with you is the Isenheim altarpiece from Matthias Grunwald's great painting, and it's the central panel of the crucifixion. Those words from Mark's Gospel and this image of Matthias Grunwald was painted as part of an altarpiece for a hospital chapel in Isenheim, Germany, in 1515. The hospital was part of an Antonite monastery set up specifically to treat patients of a deadly skin disease known as Ergot's fire, or in today's terms, erysipelas. The cause was rotten rye bread, which attracted a fungal infection, which when eaten caused either a rotting of the limbs or convulsions. This Grunwald powerful painting of the crucifixion was one of nine large painted panels, which when opened show figures larger than life placed at the centre of the hospital chapel. The Christ figure is deliberately shown as a figure contorted and suffering, bearing the marks of erysipelas and embedded with thorns of wood. As soon as the patients saw the figure, they could see that Christ was as they were, suffering and dying from the same disease. But uniquely, the crucifixion is seen with the figure of St John the Baptist, standing on the right, pointing at the Christ, hanging on the cross. Unique because we know that by the time of the death of Jesus Christ, John had been murdered by Herod, could not have been present for the death. So why does Grunwald include John in his crucifixion? And how is today's gospel seen as a part of Grunwald's crucifixion? Let's look at the picture up on the screen. We see Jesus at the centre, set against a black landscape, stretching into the distance. If you look carefully, you can see just behind the cross and John's figure a stream of water placed across the landscape. John's feet is the Lamb of God and falling into a chalice, the blood of the Saviour. Above, John points away from himself at the dying Christ. In a panel behind John's head in Latin are the words, I must decrease and he must increase, words spoken by the Baptist. On the left of the Christ figure are the traditional figures of Mary, his mother, supported by St John the Divine, and kneeling at the foot of the cross, Mary of Magdalene, in supplication with her alabaster jar next to her. The agonised figure of Mary, his mother, is bent backwards in an inverted pieta position, one she is traditionally shown in reverse when bearing her dead son in other pictures. Away from the centre panel are two side panels, open to show on the left, St Sebastian, against a pillar, and on the right, St Anthony, the patron of the order, bearing his Tau cross. Every distortion of the Christ figure has a purpose. The hands are in rigor mortis, with muscles stretched from death pangs. The legs are crossed and the feet twisted, allowing the sacred blood to drip onto the parched earth next to the chalice. The face of Christ bears the marks of the disease, pale green flesh distorted around the mouth and the eyes. Below the crucifixion, on a panel known as a predella, there is painted a lamentation of Christ, depicting the figure of Jesus just before it's put into the Holy Sepulchre. So in one sense, all these panels are waiting for something to happen. And when this panel is closed, new panels are opened to reveal the Annunciation, the Nativity, and a great psychedelic resurrection. Then finally, when the last panels are open and revealed, They show a carved wooden shrine at the centre, with the founder of the Order of St Anthony at the centre, supported by on the left St Augustine and on the right St Jerome. And most important of all, attached on each side of the carved shrine on the left, a panel showing a meeting between St Anthony and St Paul the Hermit, 
set in a landscape of vegetation which contains representations of the medical plants, herbs used by the hospital, and on the right the temptation of St Anthony with devils and angels and the saint undergoing his cleansing. Here you see the art of painting and carving woven into the art of medical science. The altarpiece is meant to be a therapeutic focus for healing, meditation and teaching at the heart of the monastic hospital. What more suitable icon of faith could we be looking at for Lent 2021, the Lent of the pandemic sweeping the world? This crucifixion puts Christ at the very heart of all the healing of body, mind and spirit. This is what John the Baptist points to as he protects the Christ from his bleak landscape. He also points to the waters of baptism, the entry into the Church of God, the Ark of the Covenant and the Body of Christ. But these waters are more than that. They not only heralded the Christ from Nazareth, but they are also the cleansing waters of forgiveness and hope, the springs of healing water used for washing patients in the hospital, in life and in death. So the John of the first Sunday in Lent is placed next to his master whom he baptised in the River Jordan, now seen at the triumph of the crucifixion, the very moment when the Christ is victorious in his suffering over death once and for all. This is the moment of victory. This cross is the moment of triumph. This is when the forces of evil are overcome and all suffering and all disease and all sorrow are turned into the glory of the resurrection. What looks like the triumph of death over life is in fact the reverse, the triumph of life over death. This is what the vaccinations are all about. That's what the heartbreaking COVID wards are doing. It is not death which triumphs, but love and life over all tribulation, which the NHS and its valiant staff are achieving. Yes, there is tragedy and loss, suffering and death in all its reality, just as it was with the Christ of the Isenheim altarpiece. But the truth is what is covered beneath the dark panel, the glory of the hidden new life in the God of love. This is what the patients in the Isenheim hospital wards were meant to see as they entered the hospital chapel and gazed on the Christ, covered in their sores and their skin disease, dying and suffering with them and for them. And it was this Christ who came to them in the sacrament of Holy Communion as the Mass was celebrated day by day beneath this Christ as he still comes to us day by day in our hospital chapel of St Bartholomew the Less and in the Great across the road and has done for nearly 900 years of unbroken ministry at the heart of our city. Now while continuing to look at the great panel painted, listen to the Miserere by Allegri using the words of Psalm 51 sung by our own choir as you continue to look at the image of the crucifixion by Grunwald. <laughs>
So having heard the recording of the great Miserere and while looking at the picture of the crucifixion by Grunewald, let us pray for God's world, its peace and its unity, for our ministry of healing in God's world, for Sir Bartholomew's Hospital, the patients and the staff, that we may follow Christ on his path to Calvary and into Easter Day for the figure of St John the Baptist as he points to the Christ figure and encourages us to follow him, that we may believe in the gospel of hope and live out that hope in our daily lives. And so we say together the prayer which Christ himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And finally, we join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.